Hey guys, welcome to Lightroom Zen, your source for tips, tutorials, and presets to improve your photography. Today we're going to look at this kind of fairy tale image and do a before and after edit video of it and show you guys the whole process that went into making this. Um, this was an outtake image of a fine art series I was working on and I snapped it during setup while I was testing lighting and everything. It was a really cold morning and it was raining and I was trying to work really quick and, and in my setup I left my light way way underpowered and this is the photo it gave me. Um, this was the original photo. You can see it's really underexposed. It's not like the color balance and everything. White balance is way off. But thanks to Lightroom and shooting in RAW I was able to salvage it and turn it into what I think is a great portrait here. So first off, like I said, this, this image is way too cool and I'm gonna warm that up a lot. Close to probably 6,000. I really wanted the glow of the lantern to be the right color on her skin there. And I'm going to bring down the tent more towards the green side because of the, the kind of wooded area. Um, I'm going to bring up the exposure a lot because it was way underexposed and add a little bit of contrast to work with here. I'm going to bring down these a little bit. And I'm going to bring down the blacks a fair amount to add some more kind of moodiness to the woods here. Okay, I'm going to add a, a good bit of clarity. Um, I normally wouldn't work with this much, but because the image was so far from where I wanted it to be to start with, I'm going to have to be a little more heavy-handed with the editing. Um, and I'm going to drop the saturation a tad because I'm going to be adding a lot of color here. Now, that's already a big change from what we started with, with just your basic settings there. So that to that is already dramatic. But as you can see in the edited, the final version has a lot more character, a lot more of a uh, tonal feel and just kind of a fairy tale look, which was the, the purpose. That all comes from using the tone curve and a little bit of split toning. Now, as I've shown you before, split toning adds a color cast to your highlights and shadows. So I'm gonna add a little bit, let's see. A little bit of warmth in the highlights. Let's set that up to a decent amount of saturation. And just a, a hint of the same down in my shadows. So that's a lot warmer. That's a lot more, that's kind of closer to where I would want the image to be out of camera. Now, the tone curves is where the, the rest of this image gets its character from. Um, I did add a little bit of grain, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that so I can see as I'm working here. And just a little bit more sharpening. It's already, yeah, just bump it up a little. So back to the tone curve. So split toning applies color to your shadows and your highlights. And if you toggle that while looking there, you can see the, the color of the image changes with split toning. But because there's a lot of black here that is almost pure black, it can't really apply too much to that. And same with uh, with her skin. The more detail there is in her skin or in their other highlights in the image, the more split toning will affect the image there. You can see the split toning warmed her up nicely. But the shadows, because I did bring them down to add a lot of moodiness to the woods, they're not getting affected as, as drastically, which I don't have the saturation as high. And I'm going to bring the balance down more on the shadow side, actually. I don't have the saturation as high because I don't want to overdo it because there is a lot more shadow than highlight in this image. But it's still not affecting it nearly as much. So I'm going to add this really hazy kind of effect with my tone curve. Um, so grab the bottom left of your tone curve, the little point there, and we're going to bring that up here. And immediately you can see that that evens out your exposure and your contrast and everything just kind of flattens. And that's okay. It's not what we want yet, but it's a, it's a big step to get there. If you can't drag your curve for whatever reason, click this little box and make sure your point curve is set to custom. If it's set to linear, you won't be able to, to create and drag points like I'm doing here. Okay, and the same thing, we're going to drag the top down a good bit closer to the, the first little line there. So that's a lot closer, not in color, but in, in the 
tone and uh, the, the contrast and everything, the hazy, fuzzy kind of feel is a lot closer there. And you can see I also, in the other curve, down towards the bottom here, just added a little bit of a, a positive boost there, a little bit of contrast. Oh. Okay, so that's the overall curve. And you can see that now the split toning is affecting the shadows a lot more. It warmed up a lot more now because there's a lot more information in the shadows. When I drag that far left point of the curve up, it's saying this is where the black level can start. It can't go all the way down to black anymore. It can only go to this kind of grayish black. And that gives the split toning a lot more information and detail to apply to. And the same with the skin, because I brought that down, it's not as dramatic either anymore. The color on the skin, I brought it down, whereas on the shadows, I brought it up. So the next step is here on your channels for your tonal curves, we're going to do kind of similar curves for every channel here, and that's going to give us the rest of our coloration in the image. So with the red, I'm going to bring down the red in the shadows just a little bit, and I'm going to add a little in the highlights here. If you go up in your curve, you're adding in that section of the histograph, and if you go down, you're taking away. And you can see the curve here follows my histogram pretty closely. So just a little bit of red there. And with the greens, I'm going to do about the same. And you'll see the blue is going to be what changes everything dramatically. And you'll see why I did this with the greens and reds. So those are typical S-curves where you bring down the shadows and you bring up the highlights. And that makes the shadows darker and the highlights brighter, which is contrast. That creates natural contrast in your image with the histogram. We're going to do the opposite with the, with the blue channel here in the tone curve, because I want to bring up the blues and the shadows and bring it down and keep her skin warm in the highlights. A little more. And I'm going to drag this a little to the left and have it affect there, down there more. And if you make a point on accident like I did there, you can have it selected and just hit. Have it mouse over it and hit delete. Well, backspace doesn't work apparently. I don't have a delete key. Let me right click and delete control point. There we go. Okay. So you can see that's a lot closer. It's not exact yet to the image I have there, but it's getting closer. So from there, it's kind of a matter of playing with your color in your tones just to get it just right. Oh. Let's see. I think the reds need to come down a lot now. That's definitely closer. And you can play with your balance and your split toning too to get a little closer. There we go. And let me go back to my regular tone curve and bring it up or just bump it up a little bit more. So that's pretty close. I'm still not quite where I was. So let's compare. There's a lot more blacks in this image than this image. Let me bring my black level down. Sometimes it can be really hard to mimic an edit you did before just because your eye is different when you go back to an image and everything. And let me add a little more. So that's pretty close there. Still a little different. Let's see, there's still more, there's more blue in this image. Go back to my tone curve. Let there be a little more blacks. And let me edit my blue curve.
that's pretty close. I like that a lot. Um, pair again. So it's, it's still a world's different than where we are. And I like parts of this edit better than the original. So every time you edit, you're going to get something different. But that's the overall process of getting from where I started, which was this almost unusable photo to the finished product here, which is a nice warm glow. It has the hazy background and everything kind of just feels like it's a fairy tale or kind of uh, kind of fantasy look there. And that's all using your tone curves and a little bit of split tone, not anything too drastic. But the tone curves have so much control over your image. And just to show you again, if I turn off my tone curves now, this is what I would be working with. And that's just, the contrast is way too high. Um, her exposure is good, but the rest of the image just doesn't look right. But when you introduce that tone curve, everything evens out. You get that nice color cast, and all of the character of the image comes through and comes to life. So that's just a little tutorial on using tone curves along with split toning to create kind of a fairy tale fantasy look there. So feel free to check me out on lightroomzen.com. All of these tutorials are posted. Um, I usually do one video a day. Uh, follow me on Twitter at LightroomZen, and you can send me an email at LightroomZen at gmail.com if you have a photo you would like me to edit on video here. And I'll see you guys next time.